Hi guys, this is Conspiracy from SurrealPSD.com and in this video we'll be creating a B-movie style title in Photoshop. So here we have a look at the final piece that we'll be creating and it's inspired by the title sequence for uh, an old B-movie called The Thing and it was later remade uh, by John Carpenter, um, a great film, great remake. So this is inspired by the 1940s era of B-movies. So this is an overall look of, of what we'll be achieving, so let's get down to it. Okay, what you need to do is create your type in the kind of classic fashion. You, you just put your type out. Now you can go to dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com, and they have a whole section there dedicated to horror typefaces so grab something suitable and arrange your type so to the right here we have two type layers what we want to do is we want to duplicate those layers so I selected two there clicked one held down command which would be control on a PC click the other one just right click duplicate layers or you can go command J so we're going to hide the originals and with these we want to rasterize type by right clicking on that and then you can go command and E or right click and merge layers I'll go command and E so this is one layer now the first thing that you need to do is go into the blending options by right clicking on a layer clicking blending options and here within the blending options you need to select gradient overlay so by default it's black to white we want to do is change the angle by using this dial here to 90 degrees or um, typing it in there in the dialog and we'll go diver as well because that evens out the gradient very useful to know now we need to edit the gradient so we're going to click on the gradient bar we're going to click on the black and we're just going to take that down a notch so it's not extreme black it's a kind of mid-tone 50% gray that's what we need click OK on that and here on this gradient bar what we need to do is just click once more and this point that we've just added here we want that to be pure white so we just want to control the intensity of grey to white and we can do that by these little middle sliders here so some experimentation but we, we want it to be white stark and then a small gradient going up to that grey sounds complex but have a little experiment with this gradient dialog and you'll get there in no time so that's looking okay that's looking okay we'll click okay and we're done on that bit right now the next thing that you need to do is you need to command and click on the layer that we just created so we're just gonna rename that we're gonna call that type for now and we need to create a new layer there's a shortcut for that that's command shift and N and with this selection what we need to do is add these little catch lights on the top and that's very straightforward what we do is we create a selection based on the type command and click in the layer icon make a new layer and then hit B for brush now I've got brush selected I'm right clicking on the screen and want the hardness to be 100% and the size to be let's have a look in this instance, I'll say, I'll say around uh, around 40 pixels, that will do it. And the idea here is you make one click, you hold down shift, and you click again, and that will do a, a straight line. And what I'm going to do here is click once, hold down shift, click again, click again, click again. So it's a kind of straightish, jagged line. When you hold down shift, it will just, and click another point, it will do a, a perfectly straight line so I'm just gonna go around what I may do is a uh, time-lapse this bit so I'm not laboriously going around and the idea is is any kind of horizontal edges we're gonna capture them so I'm just gonna do that now go right round okay so that's been done you'll notice um, that we also went through that process for the small V at the top now to deselect command and D 
and we can see that those catch lights are there on the top of the letters. So that's the next stage. So we have the type there and we have this new layer here which we'll call catch lights just to make it easy for the tutorial. What we need to do now is put both of these into a group. So I click on that layer, click on hold down command and click the next one and use the shortcut command in G which will group them together. So we're just going to call that one title and we do this for a reason. We can duplicate this group just in one go and then we're going to duplicate that again. I'm going to use a shortcut command in J and we're going to hide the original and we're going to bring both of these underneath. So for now we're going to hide one of them and what we need to do is we need to merge the group. So it's just one layer without being in a group and we'll do the same to the other one as well. So make that visible and go merge group. So we have two of the same things. We could have just copied one group and then duplicated that merge, but that's fine. We all get there in the same way. And with this, what we need to do now is do a radial blur to do the lights coming out of the type. Now it's important that your main bit of text, the biggest part of uh, type that you have, is fairly centerish within the actual scene itself. So that's got to be center for the radial blur effect to work. So we're going to go filter, blur, radial blur. And the value we want for this, for this first one, is going to be 100. Just let that chug away now. Um, it's important to note that you, this will only work if you have a very, very, very dark background. So I'm, I'm just going to show you very quickly now. Uh, this is uh, a radial gradient, just a very dark background. So the, the effect will only work with a dark background. So that's the first one. And we're going to change the layer mode for that to hard light. Now at this point, what you can actually do, if you need it to be more, um, to expand more, you can go Command and F, and that will repeat the filter itself. So that will just chug away, radial blur and there we go and what you can also do is transform it even further because it's not a photo a figurative element you can actually stretch these elements and it's not too bad so command and t to transform you can right click on that and i'm going to choose distort and with this it's going to go outwards and make this kind of um, these these light flashes more prominent and that will do it for that one hit enter or you can click the tick up there either or and we'll go through a similar process with the second one so I'm just going to move that up and this time we're going to do a smaller blur so filter blur radial blur and well, this one is going to be less it's going to be about let's have a look about 27 I'd say go okay and we're going to change the layer mode for that one to overlay so this is subtle it's um it's just a subtle extra glow we can take the opacity down if it's too strong and we're losing our letters that doesn't have to be really high it's just a very subtle glow so we have the basis for our type there with the light flashes coming from the letters themselves. With this original hard light layer, if you need to reduce the opacity, if it's too strong, then that's perfectly fine. You can do that at any point as well. The next phase that we need to do is bring in some smoke. So you can get smoke files, or this is a, a swirling mud file uh, from Research. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll add a link for that one on Surreal PSD. Uh, we have more mud there, smoky looking mud, and we have an actual uh, smoke file here from DeviantArt, and I'll include the link for that one as well on um, surrealpsd.com. So let's uh, let's drag that in. So I just clicked and dragged that straight into this file. Right, what we need to do is go Image Adjustments, Desaturate. That's the first step. 
and we're going to change that to screen and screen will knock out all the blacks and keep the whites and we're going to just give it a, a rough position there and go image adjustments levels so we're going to control the whites and blacks even more so the middle slider let's just push that to the right a bit and maybe the black slider a tiny bit and let's just have a look we'll go okay on that we'll move that around a little bit and we'll pull the opacity right right down so it's more subtle okay and what we do at this point is we add a layer mask we hit B for brush and these four these colors here we're gonna hit X to switch the black to the foreground and changing the brush size you can use these square brackets on the keyboard I'm just gonna take away the edges and selectively eat away at this this kind of smoke layer um, this bottom bit doesn't look too bad so just go around a bit that's looking all right that is not too bad and gonna duplicate this layer command and J to duplicate this layer and I'm gonna just maneuver this round my um, flip it vertical edit transport flip vertical okay let's move that give it a bit of experiment And then on the layer mask again, hit B and just take it back where it's where it's needed. So that side, very subtle. And let's go for one of these nice swirly muds. So I'm gonna click and drag that straight in. Same process again, image adjustments desaturate. Change the layer mode to screen, and we're gonna go image adjustments levels and we're going to tweak the levels once again so let's just move that there so we can see it so the middle slider is going right across I might grab the uh, the black slider and pull that in as well and let's give that a go go edit transform rotate 90 degrees clockwise and you guys you can rotate any of these elements whatever is suitable for your own particular piece you're not limited it's all about experimentation so we're just going to grab this one we're going to move that out and then double click on that once again we're going to add a layer mask and go command and i to invert and then using b for brush and making sure the foreground color is to white i'm going to selectively paint that in only in the areas that we need it so we're going to bring that in and changing the, the brush with the square brackets as and when I need to. We're getting some variation and some smoke here. So that's looking quite atmospheric already. At any point if I need to, I can click back on the, um, the layer. I was in the layer mask then and go image adjustments and then levels to tweak the levels even further. So let's give that a go, if it's necessary that is. So I just want to pull the blacks back a little bit. Mm, not bad, that will do. And there you have it. They are the basic principles for creating this B-movie type. And you can go even further with this technique as well. You can blur the overall thing. You can... Um, Add extra tones. I'm just going to show you a couple of examples now. Um, so here we go. Here's one where noise was added. So this was the uh, original preview one. So some noise was added and it was blurred somewhat. And here's one that's had a bit of color processing using a gradient map. And we, we talk about gradient maps quite a lot on SurrealPSD.com. So that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. And be sure to check out SurrealPSD.com for lots more creative Photoshop tutorials. I'll see you at the next video, guys. Take care.